Good morning. And a blessed happy anniversary to you all. This is my 15th St. Francis Day here at St. Peter's, and uh, we welcome our animal companions with us today. We begin with a collective welcoming. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God. Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Job. There, once, there was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. The man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch this bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome, loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a pot's herd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in, in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord. Be Our psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 26. We will read it together responsibly by verse. 
Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not been shot with words, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, and I go in procession around your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood. Whose hands are full of evil thoughts, and their right hand full of pride. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while has made, was made lower than the angels now crowned with glory and honor because the suffering of his death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom, through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father, for this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they said, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. 
But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Welcome to our animal companions today. I go back sometimes to my child and I find particular nuggets of wisdom, and this is one I want to share with you today. It's a, it's a bit I learned in Scouts way back when, how to make a rope. And also, in context of ropes, how do you put them together, particularly maybe when they're of different sizes, different diameters, different, different constructs. So the first way is you make a rope with a particular kind of machine that basically takes the fibers that you have, the strings, and then it twists them and sort of a triple spin. So you have a crank on one side that, uh, that cranks these different threads and turns them, and then you have a block on the other that holds a particular amount of tension. And as these separate threads twist over and over again as you put more tension, more constriction on them, more twisting and turning, they begin to turn together. And if you maintain just enough tension on them, what happens is you eventually begin to form a rope. And the interesting thing about ropes, no matter what their size, they're continually made with usually three of these particular different elements brought together, twisted, 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 until eventually you go from a rope of that diameter to one of this diameter. And that's what a rope is. It's just fibers twisted over and over together and completely entangled and involved with each other. I find that fascinating because in the end, what holds the tension together isn't something that you maintain, but in fact, something that it's made with and it's inherent into its own structure. And it's still all of its own separate parts, but in that community, it becomes a tool of utility, something that can accomplish an end. It can sustain us and hold us up over an abyss. It can hold tension and support a bridge. It can do a lot of different things if you're able to twist to just the right tension and just the right degree of involvement so that everything is bound to itself and being bound to itself, it becomes a thing of use and utility. But of course, there's a challenge with rope. It has two ends, doesn't it? So what do you do with those ends? Well, this is another aspect of rope stuff that I love when I was in Boy Scouts. You learn how to splice. How do you bring two disparate things together and make them one? Well, there's something you have to do. You have to unravel the ropes. You have to take those tightly twisted and turned fibers and you have to undo them at the ends and then you take those splayed ends and you put them together and then you slowly take them apart just enough to push the other ends in so that it actually counterclockwise and clockwise holds that tension and then those two elements become one and what were once two ends of ropes become one much longer rope. And in many ways, they're stronger than the original rope was in the first place. And on top of that, if you need to fasten your rope to something else, there's a way to make an end splice so that it makes an eyelet, and you can actually hook that on or put that around something so that it's not going anywhere. How does that bear to us? How did God make us? God made us and forged us as human beings to be in relationship, to be in relationship to each other, to be in relationship to the created world, to be in relationship to the creator. We were made and twisted and turned and held in tension in such a way that all the different parts of who and what we are as the human race are so aligned and tied together that if we pull one thread, the whole construct begins to disintegrate. 
Have you ever had a piece of string or twine that isn't quite t- tightened loosely enough, it's tightened just enough to hold the tension, but then as you abrade it, it starts to flay and come apart. When there's that kind of tension put on a community, you start to see those threads break. And it's incumbent on us to try to figure out as the body of Christ how we can welcome each other together, splice those disparate elements and become one, one again, and find reconciliation and union and community. Blessing of animals and the remembrance of Francis of Assisi is not just some cute thing that we do as a church. It's actually a deep affirmation that we understand that we are not just us in the world. There is a broader context, a warp and a weft of creation, a tapestry of existence that we are enmeshed and woven into. And to pull one thread and say, this is what it is, decries the rest of the construct and we are the lesser for it. The sound of animals crying out here in our midst reminds us of the need of the world around us, that we should be agents of reconciliation and healing, that we, being twisted and turned by the challenges of this life, understand that the church itself holds us in such attention that we become that inter-knit, that inter-spliced, that interwoven structure that can hold, support, suspend, maintain, protect, tether, anchor, so that we know not only who we are, but also why we are, and to what end and purpose. We were hearing in uh, one of the readings last week of the creation, and in Genesis, one of the creation stories, the Adam, the man, is challenged with being presented with all of the different things of creation. And when he was, and he said, that's an elephant, or that's a rhinoceros, or that's a dog, it was that thing. Not so much that that the man named them, that had dominion or control, but that there was a recognition of interrelationship, so much so that we should know a thing and be able to call it out, that we should know each other and be able to recognize the other, the beloved. How are you being twisted and turned? How is the tension being held in your life so that you are able to see and recognize the hand of the maker, not only in your own existence, but also to what end and purpose that you are being crafted? When I was uh, a younger priest, I had the great honor of knowing a naval captain. He was the captain of a minesweeper back in his service days. And one of the great challenges that every naval captain has is, can you resource and support your ship? And they needed a particular diameter of rope, and they couldn't find it. And the quartermaster of the harbor they were in wasn't willing to part with it. So he and the, uh, the other captain that were in the slips uh, of the, of the uh, harbor were standing next to each other, and there was this long rope that was used as a railing between the two ships. There were two of them. And they both had this need for this line. And they were looking at them and said, you know, if only we had rope like this for our boats. Like this. Then it would be to our purpose and what we needed. And they weren't being connected to the people who could make that thing so. So they connected themselves to the ropes as they pulled out and sailed. And as they were pulling out, those railings tied to the end of their boats went out with them. They reeled them in, and they had the rope they needed. This is not good ethical behavior. And I'm not saying this is a model for the gospel. But it's a reminder to us that we... We are the rope. We are that line. Twisted, tried, and turned, and tuned so that we are ready for service. And I pray for the day when God reaches out and touches us and says, you know what? You're what I need today. Come with me. And he took them up in his arms and he blessed them. And he reminded us all that we are children of God. Amen.
My siblings in Christ, I invite you to stand and join me in an affirmation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Merciful and loving God, we come before you seeking your grace. Create in us lives that are gracious and loving. We raise our hearts and voices to you, responding in your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to us in the world you have just fashioned. In the wonder of your creation and in the faces of our brothers and sisters, Strengthen our commitment to being good stewards of all that we had, of all that we are and all that we have. Keep us mindful of the billions of your children we will never know and the generations which will follow us. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. Train our hearts on you and teach us to listen to your voice and follow your lead. Equip us, we pray with all we need to do the work you have given us to do, to reflect your goodness in the world, to open our hearts to all people, to partner with you in your mission of reconciliation. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. Flood this nation with a yearning for justice for all people in all things. Shine a light into those instances where we have been wrong or where we have claimed that more than our share, while we needs of others have been ignored. Ignite in us a passion for your purpose in this world you love so dearly. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. As you never tire of loving us, may we never tire of caring for your people who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We thank you for experiences of, experiences of new life and insight. We rejoice with those households expanding with new children and life-giving relationships. Hold close to your heart those who are making their final journey home to you. Grant them a peaceful end and a joyous entry into the communion of all the saints in light. We pray for Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Kay, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Pat, Ayla, William, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Felipe, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, Keith, Paul, Judy, Braden, Pam, Lynn, Jeffrey, Catherine, John, Isabella, Terry, Jackson, Betty, 
David, Reyes, Florence, Jimmy, Jane, Jim, Mike, Mary, Jessica, and Brandon. In your mercy, Lord. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray, we give thanks for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks to the Reverends Dr. Daniel C. Gunn and Ann McRae Reed. We remember Sally, our bishop, and for Marshall, our rector. For those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Martine, Kieran, and Ralph, and for those celebrating anniversaries, especially Rosette and Robert. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. We remember with special intention this day those who were victims of the October 7th outbreak of war in Palestine and in Israel. We pray for the hostages that they may have a swift return home and a safe return to their families. We pray for peace and wherever hearts are broken and bodies are challenged by violence and war, may there be reconciliation and a return to balance and grace. May there be justice around the world in the name of the one in whom we pray. We also pray for Jessica and for all those who are struggling with their health with regard to diagnoses that challenge their well-being and their sense of wholeness. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We welcome our animal companions forward to receive a blessing at this time. We'll get you later, Paul. <laughs> hey, sweeties. There are neighbors to greet. Gracious God, we give you praise for these animals, and may they be a faithful companion to all who is well who are fostered. Long life and peace and health to all. Amen. Hey, sweets. Hi. You remember me? Gracious God, bless these, your animal companions, and sustain them in life and peace. May they be grace-filled this day and always in your presence. Amen. Sweet. You're looking good, old man. Keep you and sustain you this day. That's all right. Mopsy and Gizzard. Mopsy and Maxi, Maggie. Maxi, Maggie, and Mopsy and we ask you to bless and sustain you this day in health and good grace in all the days of your life. Amen. Chester. Chester. Chester, God's peace and grace be upon you. The health and wonder of all creation and grace be with you this day and always. Amen. I love his whiskers. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Morgan, may God's blessing be upon you and sustain you this day and always in peace and grace. Amen. And for all those who are watching online but have uh, animals at home, we extend a blessing to them as well. May God's peace and blessing be upon all of our animal companions here present and those at home. And the peace and grace of God Almighty in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. My brethren in Christ, may we offer together a prayer attributed to St. Francis as we conclude and move to the peace itself. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. 
where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Alice. So some things to know about as we move into the coming week. Uh, on Saturday, uh, we will have women's breakfast. That's at 9 o'clock. At 10.30, grief group will meet. Um, as well, we also have in the back, as well as in the fellowship space, the coffee hour sign-up list. Thank you very much for Alice for hosting today. We appreciate that. If you'd like to sign up, you can sign up here. Or you can sign up in, over in the fellowship space. Either way, we'll make sure the lists are reconciled. But please do consider that. It's a great way to extend hospitality and care as we are knit together and wound and bound to each other in our life of Christ. This coming Wednesday at 7 p.m., we're going to have week two of the five-week series on the sacraments, and we're going to cover reconciliation and confirmation. Reconciliation and confirmation. Reconciliation, you may recognize, uh, is sometimes referred to as confession. This is the personal right of confession that's available in our tradition. It's one of the hidden wonders of the prayer book. A lot of people don't know it even exists in the Anglican tradition, but it's very powerful, and you're going to learn about that, as well as confirmation um, and the important role of bishops in our life. We are the Episcopal Church, after all, and that means with bishops, so you learn what an integral role that confirmation and reception and reaffirmation of baptismal vows plays in our walk in Christ. Our Spanish dinner church, we had over 20 souls show up. We really appreciate the support of that. The next one will be on Halloween for uh, Dia de los Muertos, and we're going to have that meal together, as well as uh, Cena Eucharistica, you know, that whole dinner with Eucharist. And, of course, we are aware that that may impinge a little bit on uh, trick-or-treating. So if you decide to come, Anthony, we got you covered. We'll have a bag of candy for you and anyone else who is going to be coming. So you won't be left out for that. Uh, this coming Tuesday uh, in the morning, on top of the shop being open and Alice's Cup being open, we're also going to be hosting the bishop and the clergy of this part of the diocese for a, Bible, or for a book study that she's going to be hosting. This is the first in a series she's going to be doing for the clergy. Uh, she chose St. Peter's for its central location and for our ability to offer hospitality. So thank you very much for all the hard work that you all do to make this such a friendly space. We appreciate it. Um, we're going to be looking at a book called Deliver Us From Evil, which looks at deliverance ministry from the Anglican perspective. There was a study commissioned a couple of years ago in the Church of England that looked at deliverance ministry. You may recognize it as the rite of exorcism. This is actually an active uh, piece of, again, what it means to be Episcopalian. So if you're interested in the book, I'm, I'm happy to share that with you. But uh, we look forward to having that time with the bishop and the other clergy of the diocese. So we're very excited. Um, as well, if you have calendars that you are getting in the mail and you'd like to give them to us, we appreciate those, whatever shape or size, whether they're the personal organizers or the ones you hang on the wall. Um, Nancy McTaggart is collecting those for the Veterans Home, as well as shoes for Souls for Souls. Bring the pairs of shoes that you have, whatever style um, and whatever level of wear, they will be taken and purposed to use literally around the globe. This is a great ministry. Nancy has been leading us in this for a long time. We appreciate her support in that regard. And of course, Alice's Cup and Kelly's Cupboard always appreciate your support. We had a great weekend last week with our uh, ShopRite partners in giving. They did a second round of that, and our youth did a great job with regard to setting that up and running that ball. So we really appreciate that. Also, we're going to have uh, the Lunch Punch next week. We'll keep you posted on that. It's a great way for our youth-led provision of food for bag lunches and snack packs, um, and we're looking forward to that development. Again, there's a lot going on in the life of Christ. Please do avail yourself of that. And, of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can actually catch the uh, daily office morning prayer and evening prayer throughout the week, uh, Monday through Thursday, and we'll keep you apprised of all the other elements. And we're going to hear from our warden, Alice Myers, as we prepare for our annual stewardship drive. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, first, I want to say happy anniversary to Father Marshall. Thank you. Thank you for and a your... happy anniversary to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, Father Marshall's sermon today, talking about twists and turns in a rope, 
that could probably tell you a little bit about me. I'm not one that is comfortable standing and talking to people. Um, wasn't one who was very intimidated when I was asked and called to a, to a ministry. Um, Father Marshall had approached me to be co-warden and the fear was in me. I didn't know what I was gonna do, I didn't know how to do it. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself because I wanna do the best that I can for St. Peter's. My family and I have been coming here for more than 30 years. We raised our children in this church, now our grandchildren come to the church. Um, my daughter was married here and the church means so much to me. And, I, and to see the church thrive over the past 30, more than 30 years um, is a testament to all of, all of you, to the parish, the people who come here every Sunday, who love the church, who help with the ministries, who give their time. Um, so when he asked me to, to also guide the stewardship committee this year, again, I was intimidated. And, you know, I worked on a whole speech, what I was going to say, and then realized that I really just need to tell you how to come from my heart. So this year, our, our campaign kicks off. Um, Walk in Love as our campaign mission. We will, over the next six weeks, talk about time, talent, and treasure. Although treasure is, is important, time and talent go hand in hand. So we'll touch on why we give, what does the church mean to you? Um, where, does your, where does your commitment dollars go? So just um, you know, keep me in your prayers, keep the stewardship committee in your prayers, and uh, we will walk in love. Thank you. All are welcome at this altar and at this holy table, including our animal companions today. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Ofreced a Dios un sacrificio de acción de gracias y cumplid vuestros votos al Altísimo. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Padre Santo y Misericordioso, en tu infinito amor nos hiciste para ti. Cuando y cuando hablamos caído en pecado y nos hablamos sometido al mal y al muerte. There we go. Tú en tu misericordia enviaste a Jesucristo, tu único y eterno Hijo, para compartir nuestra naturaleza humana, para vivir y morir como uno de nosotros, para reconciliarnos contigo, el Dios y Padre de todos. 
extendió sus brazos sobre la cruz y se ofreció a sí mismo en obediencia a tu voluntad, un sacrificio perfecto por el mundo entero. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Celebramos el memorial de nuestra redención, oh Padre, en este sacrificio de alabanza y acción de gracias, recordando su muerte, resurrección y ascensión, te ofrecemos estos regalos. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, in the language of our heart, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, bearer of our sins. Jesus, redeemer of the world the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries today? All right. Well, please do join us in the parish hall for fellowship after the service. Que el Espíritu de verdad les conduza a toda verdad, dándoles gracia para confesar que Jesucristo es el Señor y para proclamar las maravillosas obras de Dios. Y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, sea con ustedes y permanezca siempre con ustedes. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you the grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please join in singing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.